cover is why networking, the common mistakes and pitfalls, and then some of the strategies and tips that the best networkers done and that you can use those things too. So if you're tired of being a best kept secret, then we're gonna show you how to get out of the closet. <laughs> and if you're already networking, but you would like to take it to the next level and amp it up a little bit so that it really is part of your overall strategy of being seen, being heard, having more impact and influence, then you are absolutely in the right place. I will let you know that all of us, we're gonna be giving you everything we can in the time that we have available, and we will also, if you're interested in having a further conversation with any one of us, we will let you know how to follow through with that as well. So I wanna go ahead and pass it to Ingrid so she can go ahead and introduce herself. Good afternoon. I'm Ingrid Edstrom, Polymath Bookkeeping, where we take the weight off your shoulders with top-notch bookkeeping services and education. And when I first started my business in 2008, I knew plenty about being a bookkeeper and very little about being a self-employed professional. Fortunately, I had a client at that time who introduced me to Business Network International. She invited me to a meeting, and I knew the moment I walked into that room that it was going to be a really good fit for my business. And B&I, through the membership I had there, taught me a lot, both through the um, relationships that I developed with my colleagues in the room as well as through my membership the educational resources available to me and it was B&I that introduced me to the Ashland Chamber and from there I met several other networking opportunities that I'm now involved in and all of these have become the cornerstone of my business and my marketing plan and I'm going to tell you in a little bit how and why. Bye. So I'm Bunny Lewis, I'm a registered nurse, I was a nurse practitioner for a lot of years, um, and what led me into being networking is a networking business. So I joined the Juice Plus company about 18 years ago, and during through that have become really embracing of the network marketing strategy and how it works. And so Lasting Wellness was developed at that time and it became my brand and it became my brand because it also went into when I became a clinician on my own as a nurse practitioner I had a women's health clinic I called that lasting wellness health care for women so it really became a part of who I was and have helping people be healthy and I also have other organizations I'm a part of and networking is more than just those business networks, it's also your rotaries and your other types of community groups that you're part of, even your churches. I'm a part of PEO, which is a professional educational organization where we help people get scholarships for women. The chamber is huge in what I do. And BNI, which has been really instrumental in helping me grow my business. So that's what my background in network marketing and networking has to offer today. Now, Lauren. And once again, I'm Lauren Fogelman. I do success coaching, um, business success solution. I work with high achieving go getters, primarily entrepreneurs as well as athletes, on um, being able to get to the next level of success by having improved laser focus. Now, my husband and I moved here from Miami, Florida, so if you want the accent, it's New York, Miami, Oregon. Um, <laughs> uh, and we immediately joined the chamber. We have been Ashland Chamber members since 1997. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> and, and steadily, because we know that chamber works. Now, we own Copia Counseling Services uh, when we first moved here up until last year, and that was the networking opportunity that we optimized was through chamber. And I will let you know that at that point, I couldn't stand networking. I didn't like going to networking events, going to uh, or, uh, meet and greets, any of those things because I felt that those were very superficial, shallow connections. And that just wasn't me. The introvert part of me couldn't stand going to a networking event. It was painful. So during the time that I was working with uh, my husband Steve as a therapist, I hid in the office loving to do the one-on-ones with my clients and helping them make changes in their lives. But for me, 
Steve was a schmoozer. He loves this stuff. He eats it up for breakfast. Um, so it was easy for me to let him do it and just stay hidden in the office. When I shifted and it was time for me to step out and move out on my own with business coaching, I knew I had to get out of my own way. And the first thing I did is sign up for Toastmasters. That way I knew I would learn to be comfortable in front of other people and do what I'm doing right here, which is speaking and making connections. I will let you know because of it, it wasn't that I got anything new from Toastmasters, it was that I was able to change my perspective as to how I approach public speaking and how I approach networking. Because even when I joined BNI in uh, 2009, when they started the Ashland Business Connections here, great organization, while I was waiting my turn to do my 30 seconds, I was having an aerobic heartbeat and I was sitting down. <laughs> so um, I will let you know that as you do something more and more, you become more familiar with it, more comfortable. You find a way to make it work that feels genuine and authentic for you. So it's not that you can't do it, but you have to find the right fit. And that's what I love pe helping people do is how to get out of their own way so they can take their business to that next level of success. Great. Thank you so much, Lauren. So as we're diving into the meat of our presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about why networking. So the question is, where do the majority of your clients first hear about your products and services? Are you getting all of the clients you need from the advertising that you do? And as we know from Ginger's presentation, advertising and marketing are not the same thing. So raise your hand if you have clients that hear about your business from word of mouth. Keep your hand up if you want more word of mouth referral clients. So if you get clients from word of mouth and you want more word of mouth clients, do you have a strategy for developing the word of mouth marketing in your business? So as we're getting into why networking, I want to start with what does networking do for a business? And I think the best way to illustrate this is actually with a little bit of an activity. So I want everyone to get up and find a partner. We're going to thumb wrestle. <laughs> yep, action photos. Good go ahead. So I'm going to time you. Everyone has 30 seconds to get as many wins, as many wins in 30 seconds as you can get in a thumb wrestling game. And on your mark, get set, go. Yep, we're going as many wins as you can get in 30 seconds. That's 10 seconds gone. Halfway there. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, stop. All right. Everyone have a seat. Now raise your hand if you got at least five wins. Raise your hand if you got at least five. Anybody get ten? Fifteen. More than twenty. Okay, how many did you guys get? Fifty-three wins in thirty seconds. How did you do that? We took turns winning. One, Took two, turns. Four, five, six, uh huh. So, <laughs> taking turns, helping each other. Competition versus collaboration. By helping each other win, both people won more by removing competition from the equation entirely. So, the question is how do we do that within all of our businesses? Collaboration is wonderful and Thank you, Ginger. I'm going to tell you a real-world example. So in my business, I, I told you how I got involved in networking to begin with. But what's happened since then? Where has networking brought me in my business? Last year, 2014, 90% of my business came from my word-of-mouth referrals. Not necessarily from any one particular word-of-mouth avenue, but only 10% of my new business came from my advertising. And what's more, I found that my most effective, my best client relationships that make me the most money and that I enjoy the most are the ones that come from the relationships that know me and my business the best. So 
Ginger didn't touch on this part as far as the, the overall marketing side of things go, but generally they say that you want to invest your marketing dollars into the areas that are going to make you the most money. You don't want to put you know, $3,000 into a phone book ad that is never going to get you a single call. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I have to admit that in my business, my advertising and um, income ratios are a little bit skewed. And the example of this is that last year I rebuilt my website. I spent $2,000, more than $2,000, rebuilding my website. Now don't get me wrong, I love my website. I use my website for a lot more than just bringing in new clients. I have video tutorials and blogs, resources for my clients to get more out of their relationship with me. And in the last year, I have gotten two clients who found me online. Great clients. Well, one of them is a great client. The other one I'm not working with anymore. But <laughs> his boss said no. <laughs> but with that, I spent just over $800 on my various networking avenues. That includes my BNI membership, my membership to Ashland Chamber of Commerce, my membership in the Southern Oregon Bookkeepers Association, and a couple more. I got 42 new clients in 2014 by word of mouth referrals, and nine so far this year. And that's keeping in mind that I was turning down new clients for most of January and February because I'm a bookkeeper and it's tax season. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what works for me in my business. So understanding your marketing budget, you have to include important memberships. So raise your hand if you're a member of a marketing thing. That includes chamber. A lot of us are chamber members, yes. So making sure that you budget for those memberships. And what a lot of people don't realize is that there's three different kinds of marketing memberships that you can belong to. There's social and civic memberships, um, which Bunny mentioned a bit, that can be Rotary, Elks, Kiwanis, where you're there for a social or civic purpose, but of course you're gonna meet people, you're gonna develop relationships, they're gonna get to know you and your business over time, and you will develop client relationships. There's soft networking, which is Chamber of Commerce, where any business is welcome to join the chamber. And you, there might be three other people in that room that you're in competition with, even if it's friendly competition. The third is hard networking, or solid networking, where there is only one person per professional classification allowed in a chapter or group at any time. And you're not selling to the 20 to 40 people in that room, you're selling through them to the 40, 400 people that each of them know. Those people, as you meet with them each week, become your sales force. So you get to know them and their businesses more and you develop a relationship of giver's gain. So it's important to choose which networks are gonna fit for your business. And as you're choosing them, recognize that it's not all about the monetary investment, it's also about the time. Hard networking works really, really well for me because I invest the time into those relationships. And I have to admit, I'm a bookkeeping nerd. You guys might have noticed that about me if you know me a little bit. I can pull up a report in my QuickBooks on anything. And that includes knowing exactly how well all of these relationships are working for me. I know to the dollar how much B&I and Chamber made for me last year. And they're good relationships. I'm gonna keep investing time and invest more time into what's working for me and my business and what is the most fun, because if you don't enjoy it, what's the point? So once you've decided which networks you want to try out and figure out what's going to be the best fit for your business, remember that it takes more than just showing up to a meeting. You have to build relationships, put yourself out there, be a leader in the community with a focus on giving without an immediate need for personal gain. Not all leaders stand at the front of the room. There are volunteer opportunities, take on responsibilities, such as with the 4th of July parade, right Dana? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. And make a name for yourself in the community as someone that people generally know, like, and trust. As someone who can be approached as a resource that wants to help other people. As someone who is passionate about what you do and why you do it. Not all leaders are the ones standing at the front of the room. Now the people that I have relationships with are able to pick my best clients out of a crowd and boy do I love them for it. 
Melanie's smiling at me. <laughs> Melanie is one of my power partners. We have a one-to-one -one scheduled every month, and yes, we produce for each other. We love it. Um, now, in those cases, to develop those relationships where we're producing referrals for each other, oftentimes I have to be the one who shows up first. I have to show them the value of a relationship with me, learn about their business, start referring to them, and I don't mind doing it one bit because I know that that's gonna come back around. I don't have to worry about whether I'm gonna get something in the end because I know that I'm good at what I do. I know that I care about my relationships, about my clients, and it always comes back, which is why I got 42 clients and nine more this year. So it works, it works really well for me. And by building relationships through helping others, you will become someone that your community has top of mind and tip of tongue Anytime your industry is mentioned in a conversation or anytime a need is brought up in conversation that you might be able to fill. So the best way to get started is to come and experience a meeting. Come to Chamber, experience those meetings, visit a BNI meeting or another hard networking group. Put yourself out there and if there's something that you need an invitation to, talk to someone who's involved and establish a relationship with them. I invite you to talk to me. Let's schedule lunch. Anything you guys want to add on any of that? All right, Bunny's up next. So let's talk a little bit about what happens when you do go to a meeting. And let's, or even let's talk a little bit about what Lauren was talking about, how she just would, couldn't stand even the thought of going to a network meeting and what that might mean. So there are several personalities that will give us, um, there we go. So there are several different personalities that you can find when you walk in a room. And you may or may not identify with any one of these. But I'm gonna talk about them and I'm gonna talk about um, how they work for you. So do you think that if you walked into a meeting, even today, if you had walked in here today and all you did was go sit in the corner and hide your face that it would do your business any good. You know, that's kind of almost a waste of your time if you're gonna do that. So the hermit is the person who really does, you know, is so shy and introverted that they don't want to be out there putting themselves out there. They're scared. They're really good with technology. I mean, they might come and fiddle with this kind of thing, or you might find them on Facebook or something, but even that's a little bit, like some of them, that's a little bit, well, what do you mean you want to get involved in social media? You really don't grasp what being a hermit crab's all about, do you? <laughs> in other words, are you gonna hide yourself away, or are you gonna get out there? And so that, the person that that's happening to, yeah, it doesn't serve you well, but if you do some of the things like even Ingrid was just talking about, find somebody that you do know and go with them so they can introduce you. And then one person at a time, you can get more and more comfortable. The other is if you join groups and you come every week, I know recently in Greeters we had a couple and one of the guys was really shy and didn't want to do it. it. Took him weeks before he finally came up and did his 30 second. His wife was doing his 30 seconds for him and finally, you know, she got him to come up with her and then she got him to do it and we've just been giving him a lot of encouragement. That kind of thing can get you out of your shell. And also things like BNI where they have a lot of education and they teach you how to even get your 30 second message down to, you know, this point, this point, this point, so that it can be easy to tell your story. That kind of thing can help you become more comfortable. And as week after week you stand up, as Lauren said, giving that message, eventually you get more comfortable with it. And Toastmasters is a great way to get more comfortable being in front of people, but even just as you get to know everybody, it gets to be easier. When you're recognizing most of the faces in the crowd, it's more like a family reunion every week than it is where you have to go in and stand up in front of a whole bunch of strangers. Um, 
The next one is the hunter. And I gotta tell you, you might have seen these people. They come in and I mean it's like they're just looking at each one and they go, oh yeah, you look like you're the one that's going to say yes. And oh man, you look like you could use my product. So I mean it's like, okay, so here they come in and they, they don't even bother to even say hi really. They just, they're after you. And the next thing you know, you feel like you were on a hunt and you were the actual ones that they were grabbing. So, I mean, think about it. It's like, you've seen them. They don't even, I mean, they won't even remember your name tomorrow unless you say yes, of course, to what they're offering. But it is more of a, like, I want, I want, I want. And, that hung, and, and that's just not gonna get you very far in this day and age. This day, it's almost like the car salesman kind of attitude. It's like, you know, the car salesman that nobody wants because you know he's gonna make you buy that car even though you didn't want it. And it's like, that's just, yeah, I wanted a car, but I really wanted to look, and they just wouldn't take no for an answer about that. You don't want that, so you, you know, being, being the victim of a hunter isn't good. So that's something you want to, you don't want to go in with the attitude of how much can I sell tonight. It isn't even about sales at that point. It's not. Networking is not about sales at all. And that's kind of an oxymoron, but it's true. <laughs> it is a, it's more <laughs> about relationship. And I know Lauren's going to talk more about that, but it is more about relationship. But what about the person who's just really new at it? Maybe they just haven't done a lot of it. And so they're changing what they're going to do. And do you mind if I use you as an example Please again? Please keep on using me as an example. Thank you. So Lauren <laughs> decided to change her focus in what she was doing. She still uses many of the skills that she had as, as a therapist. But now she's into the coaching side of it and the writing, she's an author and a speaker. This from the person who was shaking in her boots to even go and stand up at B&I. That is the apprentice at that stage. It's the person who wants something more. Maybe they're starting out a new business or maybe they just want to change the focus of that business or they want to grow it in a different way because of what they've been doing isn't working. So they're teachable and they want to learn. And the one thing I really do love about what our BNI does is that we have a mentoring program. So we assign a mentor to every new member so that they can learn what they need to do. So find a buddy. The same thing will work in chamber if you get going to greeters each week. Hook up with somebody there who's been doing it for a long time. One of the first things I did when I opened my clinic and joined the chamber is I met with the lady who helped me do my very first 30 second message because I didn't know how to do it effectively. And that, you know, you have to do it effectively. And so I got coaching to do that. So that's what it takes is getting somebody to help you formulate that story and work with you. And if you do it, the next thing you know, you're going to be Superman. So, <laughs> or Superwoman. I tried very hard to find both sexes and I couldn't to get this whole point. But it is kind of like the apprentice is the one learning, but it's very easy to learn. And, um, and we love it because we tend to want to take care of you. You know, it's like you come in and we can tell you're a little shy about it, but if you're friendly and you just smile, as Ginger said, <laughs> then, then people are going to respond to you. So... What about the schmoozer? We heard that word a while ago. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I just walked in and you just look like someone. Do you have a business card? I'd love your business card. How about you? Would you like, can you give me your business card? You just look fantastic in that and you just look so beautiful. Look at that bright eyes. You know, that's, <laughs> how do you guys all feel? Do you feel like you made a connection with me and all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You really want to do business with me. You've got my card now. We can talk later. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that, the schmoozer, I mean, they are friendly. 
they're nice. Sometimes they'll take the room by storm. Um, but really, it's, it's more than that. It's deeper than that. I mean, if you're just exchanging cards, and I have seen it so many times where no one takes the time to really talk. They just come up, well, here, I'm here today. This is my card. Can I have your card? Yes, good. Thank you. Bye. I mean, you, they barely even say their name. And, you know, your impression of that person isn't going to be very good. And your impression of, you know, and you're not going to want to do business with them because you're not going to really think much of them. But, you know, Phil's an expert networker, one drink and he's on schmooze control. So <laughs> I, you just really want, you want to think about what will really get you what you need from that group. And what's the most important thing to all of us? What, what is really most important in all of our lives? Relationships. relationships. Relationships is really what it's all about. And you do not make relationship with schmoozers. They, they, they're, not, they're too shallow, you know. So you really want to do the mastering. And I want to tell you, I wish, I wish this, um, I wish this one here was taken in a different angle. And because what you really want is to make sure that you're standing in an open kind of way and that you're listening and that you're asking questions and that you're asking who this person is and what they do and why they do it and what led them to it and you know, if I walked up to you and said, hi, I'm Bunny, what brought you here today? And what's your name? And how long have you been here? You know, and how many, do you have kids? Are you married? Are you what, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like, if you're asking them about themselves, what does everybody want to talk about? They want to talk about themselves, right? We love to talk about ourselves. But if you're asking people for that information and you're talking to them and really getting to know them, um, then you're developing relationship. And one of the things you want to be is a connector. And so it's not so much am I trying to sell to you, it's like I'm asking you enough questions so that I find out whether I have, if you have any needs do I have a solution for them? Either if it's not my product, maybe it's Lauren, maybe it's Ingrid. So what the secret is, is learning to connect each other and to connect in a way that is relational. And so Lauren's gonna go in much more detail about how to be the master. She's gonna take you that next level down. But it is, remember, it is all about listening really much more than you speak because there's a reason that God gave us two eyes and two ears and one mouth. Okay? <laughs> Lauren. So everybody who's sitting on the right side, please stand up. You're right. Everybody who's on the right, stand up. That meant everybody on the right of a table. So, oh, I'm sorry. Everybody who's on the right at the table. So, there you go. I, I get to be human too. Um, and I would like you to go ahead and find another place to sit. Take your stuff. Go find another seat in the house to sit at. And why I'm doing this is because this is a networking strategy. We tend to sit with who we like, we tend to talk to who we know, but that's not the, really the way to optimize your networking experience. You want to be able to connect with the people that you don't know that well. So this is a way of being able to do it, is to sit next to someone that you haven't met yet. Now I have things I'm going to go through, and I want your attention, so if you're interested in my notes from today, I'm going to just pass around a clipboard. If you give me your name and email address, I will send you my notes from today. 
And what I like to do is to really teach you the steps on how to do it. I love to teach the framework. So you got the reason why networking is important from Ingrid. Bunny went deeper as to who might be in the room networking and what to be aware of doing as well as what not to be doing. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the, step, the steps so you can take your networking to that next level so it's more effective. And the first one is the strategy. You want to have a strategy before you even enter the room. Think about who might be in that room, who might you want to meet that's in that room. Is there maybe someone there that could connect you to that next person that you want to meet? If you tend to be um, an introvert like I am, I want to maybe have someone introduce me to someone that I don't know yet as opposed to just coldly going and walking up to a group of people already engaged in a conversation and kind of fitting in somehow. And maybe they'll recognize me and maybe they won't. Uh, the other thing about my strategy is I don't want to just go to any and every networking event because not everyone is a right fit for me. So I want to think about where will either my potential um, joint venture partners be or potential clients and I want to go to those events and to recognize that networking isn't just face to face, there's networking that happens online socially as well, that I'm in a lot of groups on LinkedIn that are with my referral partners or with potential clients and it's a way for them to actually get to know me better and take that next step of being seen, being heard and developing relationships. So th what would be your strategy if you were really to think about it as opposed to just doing everything or doing nothing at all. Afterwards, you want to look at, it's, uh, as Bunny was saying, it's not just about passing a card into someone's hand. When someone does that to me, I feel like I need to go home and take a shower. <laughs> it, it's just not a really pleasant experience. It's a very cold one, and it's a real turnoff. It's similar to having a coffee with someone and they take 45 minutes to 50 minutes out of the whole hour after they said, hi, how are you? And they just rambled on about themselves and they didn't even show any interest in you. So what you want to do is really engage the other person by finding out more about them, maybe looking for those commonalities. What are the things that you might share in some way? And is there something that you can do so that they feel like it's a meaningful experience? Because if you can create some type of meaningful conversation where they felt that, like they walked away having insight or knowing something that they didn't know otherwise, they're going to be more likely to remember you or maybe connect you to someone else. And the other thing is, it's not about going and just sitting with your best friend or your partner or anything like that. It's about taking the time to go and introduce yourself to people that you haven't met yet. Uh, one of the things that I like to do when I'm speaking is I will come ahead of time and I'll just go up to as many people as I can in the room and just introduce myself and find out a little bit more about why they're here today, what they're interested in. And it's a way to just connect with the audience and the people that are here. But you know what? It warms them up to me. By the time I'm standing in front of the room, I'm not really a stranger anymore. They already have developed some rapport with me uh, in just that one minute connection of introducing yourself. So it's about wanting to mix and mingle, uh, having that intention. And if you're the introvert, go with the strategy that Ginger talked about with just three people. Meet three people and then go home. Now, this is my introvert strategy. When I first got into business coaching, I could see the value of network, but like I said, it was really painful for me. I couldn't figure out how to go to a room full of strangers and have a good time. That was a question I put to my mastermind group, which was my fellow entrepreneurs who were also looking to grow their business, as well as the business coach I was working with. And what they taught me, and it's been invaluable as an introvert, is go with the intent that I am hosting the event. Because when I have a party, I want to make sure that everybody at the party feels comfortable. I'm okay then stepping into that role and going up to people I haven't met yet because they're on my turf at my party and I want them to have a great experience. 
Well, by taking that into any room that I go into, and coming from the point of the hostess and wanting to have other people have a good experience, it's shifted my perspective and it's allowed me to be more forthright, I guess would be a great word for it or um, that comes to mind, than maybe being the person that's sitting by themselves in the wall, you know, just holding a drink and it's like, God, I can't wait to sneak out of here and I hope that nobody notices. <laughs> uh, so try it the next time. Take the attitude of being the host or hostess of the party. It's your party. And your intention is solely to make other people feel comfortable. After that, when I meet with people, I really am genuinely interested in them. And the way to find out about people is to lead with questions. I've developed a couple questions that I ask when I meet people that I haven't met yet. And they're great for engaging them in conversation. And I will give you uh, some of those questions in a moment that I use. But what I would say is, what would you see as a natural conversation starter that would feel genuine and authentic for you? Because a lot of times somebody can teach you something, but if it doesn't quite feel right for you, you're not going to do it anyway. So find the ones that really feel right to you. What do you love knowing about people? And use those as your conversation starters. The person that you're talking to will be really happy to share that information with you. And then finally, um, in my simple steps to be a master networker, is the Bridger exercise. It's what they teach at BNI. What I've seen really working with Ashland greeters uh, and other things is about being that connector. If you're meeting someone, who do they want to meet? And how can that help? And I'll tell you an experience that's happened to me uh, since Thursday. Is somebody found me that I didn't know on a place where I posted an article. And she's doing an online event called a Telesummit. She needs expert speakers on her topic. She reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be one of those expert speakers. I said yes, and then I asked her, do you need more of them? Because she wanted to gather 21 experts on her topic. I have some people I know. And she said, yes, I need about 13 more. So I went ahead and posted on a particular Facebook group that I'm heavily involved in with my business coach and in my mastermind group and posted, this person's doing a summit. They're looking for experts on this topic. If you're interested, send me a message with your email address and I'll make a connection. Well, I've connected maybe 15 people since uh, Thursday with this particular speaker, but I also asked the speaker, who else do you know in your network that might be looking for speakers? Because I would like to do this more. So since Thursday, I've gotten seven different speaking engagements that are all virtual, and each one of those speaking engagements are targeted to reach 100,000 people each. And it was just because I made the offer, how can I help you? And once I did that, then they started connecting me to other people in their tribe. That's what connections do, whether they are face-to-face -face here or virtual. And so what are some of the questions that you could ask? You could ask, tell me about your business. So Ginger said that wasn't the best question. I will give you a better one then. Instead of tell me about your business, one of the things you can ask is, how did you get started with doing what you do? That has a story behind it. People love telling stories. You could ask them, what are they best known to solve? Because we all have something that we're passionate about or that we love to help people do. And the last one is, who is your favorite client and who would you like to meet? Because I might know that person. And if I can make a connection, I feel good about that. And they appreciate that and they might think about me next time. And that's what all these different things are as far as networking events, whether it's here, Chamber, BNI, service organizations, is I know people, you know people, and how can we team up for win, win, wins and help each other? So what to do next is how to be able to have more contact with any one of us or maybe with somebody that you met that's in this room. Uh, 
Some of the things you can do is go ahead and see if maybe there's someone that you can invite to one of the networking events. Any of the networking uh, meetings that uh, Ingrid, Bunny, and I are part of, we would love to be able to invite you as a guest. Another thing is have lunch with somebody or coffee. Meet with people. Have that one-to-one -one because I will let you know networking events are wonderful, but that's not necessarily where you're going to close business. Networking events for me are a place to connect with people that I'd like to know and get to know more deeply and then be able to set up that one-to-one. -one. And that one-to-one -one is really where you get to start that deeper relationship and see where there's commonalities or where you might want to take the next step further. And the other thing is be a giver. Go ahead and give a referral first. If you give a referral, then people are more likely to want to get, give one back to you. And you might not get a referral back from the person that you're giving it to. But it's just about energetically you're opening yourself up to being a giver as well as a receiver. Because sometimes we're just one way. We just want to give, 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 but we never want people to give to us. And that kind of closes the energetic channels. The other thing is that we just want to get, but we don't want to give. We want to be stingy. And that doesn't really help you with really growing your business as far as networking goes or having clients that become rating fans. So those are some of the things to really use networks to help you grow your business. And some of the things that we offer is um, I have a complimentary Grow Your st Six for Your Strategy session which um, I actually have forms. If you are interested in having a deeper conversation as to how you can take your business to the next level, I would love to have a conversation as to what you can do to really open up the possibilities and take that next step. Uh, please go ahead and take one, and it's a way to get in touch with me. Okay. You can also visit polymath.com, which is my website. I have a whole bunch of free educational videos and blogs on bookkeeping amongst a whole bunch of other topics, including um, networking and developing relationships. Um, and I also offer a free initial consultation. So if you are looking for bookkeeping services or, looking for, or know someone who might be looking for bookkeeping services or need a little bit of help, I would love to sit down with them and see if they're a good fit. And if they are not the best fit for me, I will connect them to the person who is the best fit for their needs. As a member of the Southern Oregon Bookkeepers Association, that's why we established that network, so that we could network within our industry and make sure that each of us was getting the clients that were the best fit for us and that it's also the best fit for the client. And I am not a business coach, but I do offer complimentary health surveys and I help people determine how they're going and doing with that and I welcome you to call me for that. Um, and I also have a lot of experience in network marketing companies and can talk to you more about that if you have a need or know somebody who would like to make a little extra income. But for whatever, we would like to give back to you in some way, and so we welcome your uh, contacting us. And did we have any other slides? Or was I that? Think that's it. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to you. Yeah. Thank you.